doubt thou the stars are fire doubt that the sun does move doubt truth to be a liar but never doubt I love although most people would not consider English to be a poetic language such as Italian or Spanish there was a time when Believe it or not, it was one of the best at poetry. This was the time when Old English was alive. It was the time when the formal pronouns of English, thou and ye, were pretty much in vogue. Now they lay buried deep underneath the sand as casualties of change and of time. Today, the great poetry of English is going to be in the spotlight on our channel for math for language it is ironic that in order to see the best of English poetry, we must go back centuries into the past to the golden era of English prose, to the time when John Milton was alive. For he, with his prose, was the man who settled the old argument about whether the poetry of the English language could ever be compatible to that of Greek or the Roman languages, or be it Latin, Italian, Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Romanian. Could English ever have a transcendental epic poem such as the Iliad, the Odyssey, the Aeneid, the Divine Comedy, Don Quixote de la Mancha, or Os Luciadas? John Milton masterfully answered the call and bestowed upon all of us the greatest epic poem of the English language. That is Paradise Lost, written in 1667, and the sequel Paradise Regained in 1671, written three years before his death in 1674. It was a momentous occasion. After these publications, the English language would no longer be looked down on as a cast-out for not being poetic enough. After these and many other triumphs, the English language would go on to be one of the most versatile and widely spoken languages in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, before proceeding, I'd like to remind you that this channel moves on because of the contributions from good Samaritans like you out there. Thus, to support this channel, here is a list of applications you could purchase from the App Store to do just that. Included in the list is first and foremost the calculator that has inspired the creation of this channel, the one and only Cypro Math the first polymorphic calculator. Enjoy all the benefits of this one-of-a-kind calculator. Get yours today. Find the links in the description. Thanks so much for your kindness. Now let's move on to the topic of the day. All right. One of the main reasons why English poetry is so remarkable is because of the richness of vocabulary of the language. We all know English is mostly a Germanic language, but it is also heavily influenced by Latin. We must remember that the Romans 
were able to invade and occupy England for a long period of time, starting around AD 43 to about AD 410. Another event that further enriched and Latinized the English language is the fact that England was once ruled by a French-speaking monarchy in the 15th century. During this period, French was largely adopted by the British monarchy. Thus, English inherited a great deal of French vocabulary in areas such as government affairs, international diplomacy, and justice. But this is only one aspect contributing to the richness of the language. Another important aspect to consider is how easy it is to add new words into English. If a word is needed from another language, there is no problem incorporating that word in the vocabulary. This is true even when there is already an existing word in English with the very same meaning. This practice is frowned upon in other languages such as French or Spanish. Thus, English is constantly getting enriched by the influx of new vocabulary from other languages. Particularly, this easy inclusion of much needed foreign words has been key in the development of not only English poetry, but all aspects of the language, including science, politics, cinema, gastronomy, and so on. Hello fellow humans, Roberto here at your channel for math for language. First of all, I'd like to wish you health, joy, and lots of blessings today, and thanks for joining us on this occasion. Today's topic is the impossible translations of the English language. In focus is John Milton, the author of the greatest epic poem of the English language. That is Paradise Lost. We will take a first-hand look at different fragments from this masterpiece. The purpose of this exercise is to rediscover Paradise Lost in its original language, English, to develop an appreciation for how Milton really wanted us to read and understand the text. Now, I would like to share with you a few fragments from Paradise Lost by John Milton of men's first disobedience and the fruit of that forbidden tree whose mortal taste brought death into the world and all our woe with loss of Eden till one greater man restore us and regain the blissful seat sing heavenly muse that on the secret top of Oreb or of Sinai didst inspire the shepherd who first taught the chosen seed in the beginning how the heavens and the earth rose out of chaos. Or if Zion Hill delight thee more and Silo's brook that flowed fast by the oracle of God, I thence invoke thy aid to my adventurous song that with no middle flight intends to soar above the Aeonian mount, while he pursues things unattempted, yet in prose or rhyme. And chiefly thou, O Spirit, that dost prefer before all temples the upright heart and pure, instruct me, for thou knowest thou from the first was present, and with mighty wings outspread, dove-like, sat brooding on the vast abyss, and made thee pregnant, what in me is dark, illumine. What is low, raise and support, that to the height of this great argument I may assert eternal providence and justify the ways of God to man. O fairest of creation, last and best of all God's works, creature in whom excelled whatever can to sight or thought be formed, 
holy, divine, good, amiable, or sweet. How art thou lost? How on a sudden lost, defaced, deflowered, and now to death the boat? Rather, how hast thou yielded to transgress the strict forbiddance? How to violate the sacred fruit forbidden? Some cursed fraud of enemy has beguiled thee, yet unknown, and me with thee has ruined. For with thee, certain, my resolution is to die. How can I live without thee? How forego thy sweet converse and love so dearly joined to live again in this wild woods forlorn? Should God create another Eve and die another rib afford, yet loss of thee would never from my heart. No. No, I feel the link of nature draw me, flesh of flesh, bone of my bone thou art, and from thy state mine never shall be parted, bliss or woe. However, I with thee have fixed my lot certain to undergo like doom if death concert with thee death is to me as life so forcible within my heart i feel the bond of nature draw me to my own my own in thee for what thou art is mine our state cannot be severed we are one, one flesh. To lose thee were to lose myself. Like the Greek Homer, John Milton composed Paradise Lost as a blind man. And uh, it is believed that he had to recite the entire poem by heart to his secretary. This act alone make this achievement ever more grandiose. The English language has changed a lot since the time of John Milton. Some say for better, others say for worse. Now it is my belief that the time has come for both the UK and the US to create a much needed institution to protect and preserve the integrity of the English language as is for generations to come. I would call the institution the Ministry of English, ME. Modern technological advances are bringing about a series of perils that pose a significant threat to English. As the language keeps diluting due to incorrect spelling, improper grammar usage, mispronunciations, and other factors. The Ministry of English should, among other things, discourage all modern attempts to discontinue the use of the subjunctive, a verb tense that is commonly used to express imaginary scenarios and ideas. Protect all the sounds and phonemes of the English language. Set the standards of reference of the English language for both native speakers and students of English as a second language around the world. Paradise Lost is an example of a text that cannot be fully translated into a different language because the poetic quality of the poem gets lost in the process. Therefore, it is truly worthwhile to hear the original version 
so that we can better connect to the text in English. Even if you did not fully understand, I hope you enjoyed the experience of listening to this episode of the Impossible Translations of the English Language. If you decide to learn English, I think it would be a great idea if you could make it a goal of yours to read the great works of English literature in the original language. Here are some suggestions. Paradise Lost, Hamlet, The Counter Very Tales, Sherlock Holmes, Alice in Wonderland, and many others. Before you go, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you, and until next time, take care.